Hello everybody and welcome back to the ASUS North America YouTube channel. This is JJ once again and we're bringing you another motherboard overview. So continuing with our coverage on Z87 series motherboards, we're going to be covering our brand new Z87-A. Uh, for you guys that might be familiar with our previous L series motherboards, the L series were generally focused at guys that were interested in kind of the best bang for the buck or overall our value oriented SKU. So still keeping kind of the ASUS ethos of high quality um, performance, stability, uh, the great back end support in terms of our UEFI updates and our better software, as well as advanced UEFI options. All that's going to still be present here, but it's been relabeled under the Dash A series, as well as we'll even have a couple other SKUs like the Dash C. Um, but specifically, we're going to be diving into the Dash A. As always, we're going to go ahead and cover what comes included inside the box, as well as a physical topology breakdown on the board, and kind of overall the feature set that comes included with this Dash A, and then wrapping it up, giving you perspective at what kind of some of your build considerations might be uh, for the Dash A and where it sits in the product stack. So with that, let's go ahead and first take a look at what comes included with the Dash A. All right, guys, we've gone ahead and unboxed everything. We have the accessories right here. We're going to run through them quickly. First up, we've got an included SLI bridge, as the motherboard does fully support Crossfire and SLI. Crossfire bridges, for you guys that ask, are usually included with Crossfire-enabled graphics cards. Uh, we've got two Q connectors, so of course one for the front power leads, so things like your power button, your reset button, power LED, hard drive LED, and then another one for the front USB port. Got two SATA 6G cables that come included inside the box. You're good to go there. We've got the IO shield, of course, make sure to install this uh, before you put in your motherboard. And then from there, we have the support related materials. So one is going to be, of course, the support DVD. This is going to have our AI Suite 3. Um, so this is our fully integrated utility, which gives you access to all our kind of uh, supplemental software, whether that's going to be like our probing technologies, USB 3 boost, network high control, everything along those lines, as well as our uh, optimization technologies. So you're going to want to make sure and check support.asus.com for the latest version of this, as well as the drivers, which are also included on here. And then your basic user guide. This pretty much just covers all the ins and outs as far as specifications, some breakdowns on the feature set, as well as some installation guidance. So that covers what comes included in terms of the accessories. From here, we're going to take a look at the board. All right, guys, we've gone ahead and cleared everything out of the table for you, and now we're focusing on the Dash A. So once again, to kind of give you a little bit of perspective of where the board sits in the product stack, we have our Deluxe models, where there's two of them, the Deluxe and the Deluxe Dual. Next up is the Expert, then we drop down to the Pro, then the Plus, and then this model would be kind of our entry into what we consider our kind of performance-oriented SKU. So this is a really great option for you guys that are going to be targeting more aggressive price points in terms of your system builds, um, but you're really still looking to keep a lot of design quality and strong feature set. So with that, let's go ahead and take a look at the overall topology of the board and see what we have as far as the Dash A goes. So uh, from the top, pretty straightforward here, we've got our 8-pin CPU power connection. That's uh, straightforward. Moving over here on the top edge of the board, of course, you're going to see some capacitors as we float right into the first of the, the fan connectors that we have on board. So those are both four pin base fan headers. Now this motherboard does support our Fan Expert 2 technology, so that means every header that you're going to see on here has both three pin and four pin control and can be manually customized and tuned in terms of how they work within the UEFI or what some people call the BIOS as well as in our AI Suite 3. Uh, Windows-based application. Now, you'll also get our specialized header, which is just for the primary CPU fan, which has a special depression mechanism sensor that when you go ahead and install either a three-pin fan or a four-pin fan, it will automatically detect that and make an adjustment accordingly. So moving past that, if we go over to the right-hand side of the board, of course, you can see that we have our four banks color-coded to make things easy as far as knowing which channels in terms of you're working with. We, of course, have got some Inductors or chokes to be able to go ahead and help to provide power and stability for overclocking on the DRAM side. This board has already been validated up to 2800 speeds, so you definitely feel very capable that even from an overclocking perspective, Dash A is going to take care of you there. We move down and we see a couple of different capacitors as well as another 4-pin chassis fan header and then our 24-pin uh, power for our PSU and motherboard power. Now you're going to see of course a lot of capacitors uh, across the board and even though this is considered a value-oriented SKU, all these are still our FP 5K rated capacitors. So that's still going to be twice the industry average of what competitors are using on their motherboards which are going to be 2K or 2000 uh, hour rated capacitors. Now moving past that, we've got a front USB 3 header. Uh, that will also work in conjunction with our AI Suite 3 and our USB 3 Boost technology. Gives you faster performance uh, for storage devices in Windows 7 or Windows 8. 
You move down here and we've got a great set of right angle serial ATA connections. So a total of one, two, three, four, five, and six. So six uh, SATA 6G ports, those are all provided directly from the PCH. Uh, of course, you have full support for RAID and for uh, Intel's smart response technologies for you guys that also reference that sometimes as SSD caching. Moving past that, we've got our two switches here for optimized profile support on a hardware level. So the first one is going to be the TPU switch. This is a two-stage EPU switch. So this is great for you guys that are setting up systems. You don't want to worry about maybe going into the UEFI or even using our really easy software applications to be able to overclock or tune your system. You just want to get better than stock performance. So you can either go ahead and leave it on TPU stage one, which would ideally work for the Intel retail box cooler, or flip it over into stage two, where you're going to want to use a better quality cooler. Uh, for stage two, you're going to get up to a 4.25 gigahertz overclock. If we <coughs> talk about the EPU switch, EPU is a great option for people that do not want to overclock. You're looking for better thermals. Uh, you want a lower power consumption, but you do not want to affect performance. Just flip over into the on position, and that will actually go ahead and enable a hardware undervolt. So it'll provide less voltage to the CPU, helping to reduce your power consumption, bring down your thermal load a little bit, and also maybe help to extend the lifespan of your CPU part. Both of those are, like I said, 100% independent of software. Move a little bit further down, we've got another chassis fan header. We then have, of course, our power connection leads for our chassis for things like our power button, our reset button, things along those lines. Now, right above that, there's going to be a very little cool header that's right there, and that's actually our direct key header. So if you don't want to connect the reset button from your chassis uh, to actually be a reset button, you can connect it to this header. If you connect it to this header and you press the reset button on your chassis, it will automatically reboot your system into the UEFI directly. So if you're tweaking and tuning your system consistently and you don't want to have to worry about ever hitting the delete key, just connect your reset header to that and you can press your reset button on the front of your chassis to always reboot straight into the UEFI. It's a really nice little touch. Moving from there, of course, you continue to see we've got the clear CMOS jumper, you know, those FP5K caps. We've got three USB 2 headers, so that would be for like your front chassis, uh, USB ports, as well as things like a card reader. You've got a TPM header for you guys that are interested in more advanced forms of security for protecting your operating system. Uh, we've got the direct key button, so that's for people that are generally going to be using this board maybe more outside the chassis or want an easy hardware-based way to be able to get straight into the UEFI. So we cover you having that direct UEFI reboot functionality in two different ways, either this hardware button or, of course, once this is installed within the chassis, if you use the DRTC header here, you can go ahead and connect your reset button. From there, you've got a serial header and then, of course, the HD front audio connection. So that would be for your front audio on your chassis. And uh, in terms of the Realtek codec, it's a good quality Realtek 892 series codec controller. Got a good little amount of soothing caps there to help to bring out a little bit better quality. Of course, you're going to get better audio if you want to go with a discrete sound card, something like a Zonar DG, uh, which would be pretty reasonable in terms of the price point. But we still include our DTS Ultra 2 PC package. Got a great set of uh, options there, being able to tweak and tune for games, for music, for movies. Plus, you still get DTS Connect, which is a great option for being able to do multi-channel re-encode out to either a receiver or a digital set of speakers. Moving up from there, we can see that we got lastly one additional header right here, and that rounds out a lot of the fan connectivity. And like I said, keep in mind one of the big value points for this board is going to be the number of fan headers and the fact that you have the extensive fan control, especially compa compared to competitors in the marketplace. Now, if we touch on here the VRM assembly before we get into the PCIe uh, connectivity, you're going to see that, of course, you maintain heat sinks. Um, directly over all the MOSFETs so that it helps to keep this board nice and cool, helps to ensure uh, good quality stability. I've personally done overclocking on this board actually all the way up to even 4.8 gigahertz so you can feel confident that we still maintain good quality power componentry. These are actually what are referred to as fully sealed molded inductors. A lot of competitors at these similar price points actually don't even use fully sealed inductors. They might look like they're sealed but they're actually not sealed if you were to remove them and take a look inside they're actually hollow. Uh, so these actually help to provide better stability better performance, higher power output, and help to minimize things like electromagnetic interference. So overall, this uh, with our Digi Plus VRM power technology, which gives you an extensive level of tuning inside the UEFI and, and the operating system, still gives you a great bang for the bucket, tweaking to your system for either power efficiency or overclocking. 
Now if we go over to the PCIe ex uh, slot expansion, it's pretty capable. You've got a BI-1, an electrical BI-16, then a PCI slot, which might be for you guys that are using maybe legacy devices, maybe an older sound card, capture card, things like that. Another BI-1, another a physical BI-16, another PCI, and then another physical BI-16. Now the motherboard does fully support Crossfire and SLI, and that would generally be that if you're using one graphics card, it's going to be in full BI-16. If you're going to be using two graphics card and SLI Crossfire, it'll be BI-8 by 8. That would be by 8 Gen 3, which is actually technically by 16 Gen 2. So more than enough bandwidth than you need. And the last slot would actually depend on your configuration parameters. And you can actually change the speed that this operates at within the UEFI. So a uh, huge amount of connectivity. So let's go ahead and wrap this up by taking a look at what comes on the I.O. panel. All right, guys, we've gone ahead and turned the board for you, and we're taking a look here at the back I.O. on our Z87-A. So from the top, we've got two USB 2 ports. We have a combo PS2 port, so that's going to be great for, of course, you guys that are using, utilizing legacy keyboard or mice. We drop down, and we have a mini display port, and then we have an HDMI, and then we have an optical out. Uh, keep in mind that with the integrated iGPU, if you want to be able to go ahead and drive simultaneous monitors, that's fully capable, utilizing uh, the digital outputs here. We also then have a DVI port, and then we also have a VGA connection. Moving down from there, we have four USB 3 ports in a group blocking here, and these do fully support the USB 3 boost technology that we touched on earlier that's on the internal header. Once again, that just helps to speed up the performance for storage devices in Windows 7 or Windows 8 via AI Suite 3. We then have a gigabit Ethernet port based off of the uh, 8111 uh, GR. That's the latest generation Realtek controller. It's a very good quality controller, good performance, good throughput, good CPU utilization. Plus, we package that with our network eye control software, which allows you to tweak and tune and prioritize any network-centric applications, whether it might be a game, your web browser, uh, downloading applications, anything along those lines. And then rounding it out, we got all our analog audio connectivity for multi-channel audio, microphone, uh, headphones, stereo, whatever it might be. And that wraps us up in terms of our backplane and our I.O. So from here, let's go ahead and wrap up a little bit of perspective on where the Dash A sits in terms of your build considerations, and we'll go from there. All right, guys, so wrapping things up, uh, let's take a little bit of look at where the Dash A sits in terms of our, our product stack. So as we noted, we pretty much have the Deluxe, we have the Expert, we have the Pro, uh, we have the Plus, and then we have the Dash A. Dash A is going to be a great quality choice for you guys that are looking to build more price-aggressive Z87-based builds, but you're still interested in overclockability, you still want good quality fan controls, you still want the ASUS quality in terms of the UEFI, which is going to be unmatched. Um, you know, we didn't go into a lot of the unique features and functions that we've introduced specifically for this generation on the UEFI, so please make sure and check out our UEFI video on Z87. I guarantee you're going to see functions and features in there that nobody else is going to have, um, especially at these price points. It's going to be really awesome that you have that level of uh, functionality on this board within this price band. So, um, you know, pretty much the way you can think about it, this is going to give you everything that you would want generally from an ASUS motherboard, minus maybe some of the more advanced level of connectivity like some additional SATA ports or maybe like integrated wireless technology. But those are all things that you could easily expand upon, you know, at, at easy price points, whether it's, you know, adding something like our USB N53 if you wanted Wi Fi maybe a year from now, or even stepping up to better quality audio with something like a Zone RDG. So it's overall going to give you a really good fit for guys that are just looking for something that's a bit lower in cost but don't want to compromise on quality, performance, reliability, and the stability of the product. As always, if you guys have any questions, comments, feedback, make sure to drop them here on my page. I'll do as best as I can to go ahead and get back to you guys. You can also make sure to hit us up at our, Nath our North American Facebook page or our North American Twitter pages. And as always, if you enjoyed the video and you want to see more, please make sure and subscribe.